Alright, so today I'm going to be providing some tips on how to get a perfect score on the SAT Math Level 2. So starting it off, let's uh, talk about the test a little bit. Um, so the SAT Math Level 2 actually has a pretty nice curve to it, meaning that you do not have to get every single question right in order to get an 800 out of 800. Um, that being said, however, uh, this is a test that a lot of people take lightly because of that, the curve I mentioned. And um, just know that it's not a cakewalk, especially without solid preparation. So um, you can miss realistically about like six points um, in order to get 800. Now, six points does not mean six questions because uh, leaving a question blank does nothing. Getting a question correct gives you one point. And every question wrong is actually um, negative one fourth of a point. So um, you can do the math, like as, as you know, as you miss more questions, you actually lose more points than the questions you missed. So keep that in mind. So timing and preparation. So for this exam, you want to give yourself like at least one month of steady time. Um, ideally mostly without other distractions so if you have like the normal SAT coming up or AP tests or something then definitely do not take this test during that time because you will want to study for it uh, mostly exclusively so try to give yourself at least a month um, you can do that during uh, for example like winter break or something if you can that would be probably the best time um, during one of the breaks um, and then another thing you want to do is make sure you have a decent calculator for this test because this cal this test allows the use of the T83 or 84 or any other approved calculator on the entirety of its um, on the entirety of the test. So be sure to take advantage of this and have a good graphing calculator because it'll come in handy. Um, and then I also recommend buying the Barron's SAT Math Level 2 prep book um, because this test book or prep book is um, actually way harder than the actual test. So what it's going to do is almost over prepare you in a way and it actually covers more topics than a peer on the test so that's a, in a way a good thing because yeah, being over prepared is always better than being under prepared and this um, Barron's book will because it's more difficult than the test when you once you start scoring good or even decent on the Barron's book that means that you're going to score phenomenal on the actual test so that's another um, way to help increase your score and then also I would recommend during like the last month trying to get a hold of the official SAT subject test book now what I did is I went to my local library and picked up a copy because this SAT official subject test book contains um, one official math level 2 test so this test you want to take in the last two weeks of your preparation because this is going to give you the best indicator of what um, the actual test will be like and what you're going to actually score on it so definitely don't take this in like the last week or the day before because if you do bad on it then it's going to lower your confidence and you won't have that much time to learn from your mistakes and instead it's actually going to have a negative effect and make you think that you're not prepared for the test. So you want to take it a little bit more in advance so that um, even if you don't do the best on it you can learn from your mistakes and try to improve further. Okay, and then I would also recommend taking notes while you study, even from the Barron's Math Level 2 prep book. Um, now you might think, like, why would you want to take notes from a prep book? Well, actually taking notes helps you reinforce those concepts, and it's in fact a lot better than just reading it sometimes. For example, if you know that you forgot conic sections and you really wanted like an in-depth understanding of it, then as you read it through one of your books, the prep book or one of your textbooks, take notes on it so that um, you know it really go goes into your head. And finally, time yourself on every practice test you take. Now this test, um, the timing is fairly easy on this test uh, because the questions are not too complex, but I would still recommend getting in the habit of finishing before time which I always do so that you can check some of your answers on the questions you thought were hard. Okay, now using your calculator, well you want to download programs that can solve quadratic equations because this saves time and avoids mistakes and these kind of questions show up a lot on the test. Second, you can also download a program that can factor out expressions because sometimes it asks questions based on that. Um, you can also store formulas on your calculator. It's, uh, these are some examples listed like arithmetic sequence, geometric sequence, um, the distance from a point to a line, that was a unique one I found, uh, the quadratic sum of zeros, the product of zeros, because that will help you um, in a question that for example asks, what is the sum of zeros of this quadratic equation? Well, if you have the formula and you have the equation, you can simply figure that out without actually finding them. 
Um, you should also, if you have a TI-84, especially the TI-84 plus CE, know how to use some of the extra capabilities that it offers. For example, on the TI-84 plus CE, you can easily use the Inequalities graphing app and see um, how to graph them with color so it's very visual and easy. And finally, learn from your mistakes. So if a specific type of question always stumps you, write it down on a flashcard and then um, look over it from time to time. Uh, before the test so that you reinforce that idea into your head and you'll never miss that type of question again if you do so. Um, learn the different kinds of like trick questions I like to call them that the Mathable 2 can ask. So one of these can be uh, for example graphing complex numbers with an imaginary axis and a real axis. This is a topic that is often not covered in a lot of uh, prep books but occasionally shows up on the test so you'd want to study these kind of trick questions. Um, and then you can also check out some of my other videos if you want to learn how to store formulas, especially on the TI-83. And um, if you want to learn a real quick, uh, real trick of figuring out a function's range given its domain. And then uh, finally, relax on the test day and be confident. Those two things will help you uh, help you maximize your score the most. And you're, you're going to know that um, after following this video and other guides, that you're gonna get a really good score after doing this much preparation so yeah you'll be good alright that's all I have for you guys today uh, thanks for watching and see you next time